Okay, uh, I will try to stay in time this time. Uh, this talk is going to be about uh, the image-based mapping of landslide surface fissures. So we change a bit the scale. Uh, we actually zoom in and look at images at very high resolution at, uh, at the slope scale. And uh, what we are looking at basically are fractures in the surface. And uh, there are many other examples, not only landslides. You can find fractures at, uh, at along fault lines of earthquakes. You can simulate uh, similar patterns in uh, laboratory experiments. You can find tectonic cracks in the surface of the Atacama Desert. And of course, in material science, uh, fractures is a very important uh, uh, thing to look at. And for landslide study, there's also a history uh, of looking at those features at the, at the soil surface because they, uh, the way uh, those fractures, they occur and they are arranged, they might indicate a, a particular uh, uh, mechanical processes and they also might be an early warning sign for actually uh, slope following slope failures. So uh, during the years, we today have a relatively well understanding where uh, what different uh, uh, patterns at the surface of a landslide at particular positions uh, may indicate. And uh, so they indicate mechanical processes. Uh, lately, there has been also some interest raised in, uh, in landslide modeling, because you can imagine if you have fractures at the surface, that uh, changes a lot uh, the infiltration of, uh, of rain, uh, uh, of water, into the, into the moving mass. Uh, so maybe they should be considered for modeling. And as already said, they might uh, indicate uh, uh, f uh, future failures. So uh, usually those features, they have been mapped uh, during field surveys. Uh, now uh, our study site, uh, where we also often go uh, for field surveys, is uh, super source landslides. It's a slow moving landslides uh, uh, in the southern French Alps, with develop which developed in uh, clay rich black moss since the 1960s. And uh, you can see uh, here in the field photos, uh, you can see uh, some examples of the fractures that we can find at the surface. And we, uh, there's a series of aerial images now available with re resolutions between 5 and 10 centimeters. And you also can uh, f uh, see the, the patterns of those fractures there. So uh, that's an overview of the imagery we, we got. There's, those are five aerial surveys recorded since 2007 with UAVs and other aerial platforms at different resolutions. So it's really a mix of this different sensors, which makes it uh, uh, quite challenging because uh, the different images, they have different resolution, different radiometric characteristics, the, the elimination conditions were different, uh, the surface of the landslides, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of gravel and boulders lying around, so it's a highly textured, uh, noisy surface, if you wish, uh, with similar, visually similar objects uh, that can lead to confusion. Uh, the fissures, they basically, they can occur everywhere and uh, they are very, very variable in size, so there are little few constraints that we can put on the, on the, uh, on the size and the shape of those uh, features. Uh, we tried at the beginning some like classical matches, uh, uh, classical uh, approaches like uh, edge detectors, Sobel and Kenny, or a pattern matching approach. We tried to normalize or smooth the images also somehow, and that did all not uh, work so well. And what we uh, uh, developed in the end is a three stage method where we start uh, with a uh, filtering process and uh, where we use a Gaussian filter and this we borrowed from medical image analysis uh, a particular well studied probl problem there is the analysis of uh, 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 images of the human retina because the structure of the blood vessels there can indicate different uh, diseases so uh, there are is a bunch of algorithms uh, available to uh, detect those elongated features and the Gaussian matched filter is uh, based on the observation that the cross-section of such uh, uh, blood vessels, they resemble a Gaussian curve. And if we 
then we looked at, uh, at our images and if we draw a cross profile over the fissures, we can also see that this follows an inverted Gaussian curve. So we can use that uh, kind of detector as a low level detector. Uh, there's a second step to enhance the connectivity of the extracted lines and uh, finally an object oriented uh, uh, post processing procedure to eliminate some first or false positives. So to show you the principle of the Gaussian matched filter, uh, I made here up a, a toy example, a 2D example that would be the image where the, uh, there, there are low gray values where there's a fissure and you use such a kind of a Gaussian filter and this is the response you get. So you get a peak response at the fissure but you get also still a lot of responses at, uh, at edges. Now this is 2D. In reality uh, we have a uh, we have a uh, yeah we have a two day image so we need uh, actually uh, 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 this kind of filter we have we don't know the, the orientation of the fissure a priori so we test all the different orientations in 36 steps and uh, when the filter is well aligned with the direction of the fissures that's where we would get the peak response and that's the response we re retain then. Um, to get rid of the false responses at, uh, at edges, which are not at lines, we use uh, a second filter, which is a, a, the, the first derivative of the, of the Gaussian. Uh, and if we use that, we get a peak response uh, at edges, while we get a, a plateau at, at the fissure. So if we subtract this response from the first response, we get uh, largely rid of all the edges, and we remain with our fissure candidates. So we then use a threshold, which is there's a parameter, you one parameter involved where you have to tune the sensitivity of, 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 the, of the detection. And uh, once you determine the threshold, this is a, a typical uh, response image you would get. It's a binary image, which says fissure, not fissure. And you can see here that there are, because there is a lot of noise in the image, I mean, all kind of data has some noise, and so many of the uh, of the fissure candidates, they are actually disconnected. So uh, to connect uh, uh, these uh, pieces together again, we use a hit or miss transform. That's a mathematical morphology. That's also nothing new. But uh, uh, we give it a new application, and we test uh, a number of neighborhoods, which are plausible neighborhoods for uh, where a fissure, uh, a connected line, could be broken. So those are the neighborhoods. They get uh, rotated and uh, all those combinations are tested and if one uh, uh, pixel neighborhood matches the, the neighborhood which is here in the, in the structuring elements, then we fill up that pixels you can see here in red and you see that it connects quite well our candidates. So with that we go then uh, to e-cognition and uh, use an object uh, oriented post-processing routine to get f rid of further false positives. And uh, what we, one of the first steps we do is we uh, eliminate uh, the, uh, the areas which are uh, in, in shadows, which is based on the, on the thre threshold on the red band. Uh, we try to find vegetation where we use the ratio blue. Our vegetation is actually, depending on the seasons, it's uh, like, well, green or a bit yellowish. And this is relatively well expressed by a low ratio of the blue band. So then we constrain the search space uh, below uh, a third of the ratio blue and we use Otso's, Otso's thresholding me method, also quite traditional thresholding method, to determine the final threshold and we throw out everything that is vegetation. Um, one further uh, step would be um, we often found uh, that false positives that correspond uh, to um, actually larger st linear structures which locally they might, might, might get a bit thinner, like this channel here. And you get where the channel gets a bit thinner, then it matches the, the, the size of the, the fissures, the size of the filter, and you get a, a false positive. And to get rid of those, we, uh, what we did, we increased the size of the filter by a factor of 10 to map also all the larger linear structures in the, in the image. And we checked then for... Uh, the overlap between our fissure candidates and uh, those larger linear structures. And we know from the mechanics of the, of the landslides that uh, those kind of shear fissures 
they will be, uh, um, because of the material properties, they will be aligned typically to, to, uh, uh, to the boundaries of the landslides. They will be aligned typically at an uh, uh, angle greater than 13 degrees. This has something to do with the, with the material properties, with the internal uh, angle, with the um, internal friction angle of the material. So uh, by that we get rid of a number of further false positives and this is an example for results we get. We would first get just the, uh, the, uh, the pixels marked as uh, belonging to a fissure and I show you here uh, the uh, extracted center line from like ex the skeleton from those uh, uh, from those pixels so that would be the automatic detection and this would be the mapping for the same patch done by an expert this is an area where it worked relatively well this is a more complex area where it did not work that well so that's just a visual assessment to quantify that we uh, looked then at the affected area and we have to give there some tolerance because uh, the lines they will all will you never get a perfect fit between uh, two uh, two lines actually so you have to give some tolerance and we give your tolerance between five centimeters and one meter and we say okay if that uh, if that uh, grid of five centimeters or one meter is affected uh, by a fissure in, in both uh, in, in, in both mappings, in the automatic mapping and the expert mapping, it's a match. So uh, you get well, for the different images we you have, we get a uh, 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 true positive rate. The best one we get is for the for the latest image, uh, up to 65 percent uh, uh, of uh, true positives at a relatively low false positive rate. However, if you look at images, uh, this is from uh, images, uh, images here and here which have been recorded under uh, sunny conditions which might be a bit surprising uh, that uh, under sunny conditions we get higher false positive rates but if you think about it if you have uh, um, cloud cover then you have the few skylights so all your surface is eliminated homogeneously while when you have uh, full sunlight at the surface you get cast shadows and all kinds of funny things and uh, that makes it a bit more uh, difficult to, to, well, to get rid of that uh, false positives. Uh, another criteria we try to evaluate is the, the fissure density which is the, the length of uh, the, the mapped crack per, uh, per unit, per aerial unit and calculated this for different raster sizes and again here, uh, well, the best results we got for that, a very good correlation between the manual mapping and uh, uh, sorry, the uh, automatic detection and the, the manual mapping. Uh, for the sunny, for the scene where we had sunlight on, at the surface, uh, again, there is a rather low correspondence. Uh, for the mechanical interpretation of those features is it's very important that the orientation fits so we also looked at the mean orientations we use a classical tool which are rose diagrams and we can compare the orientation between the expert mapping and our automatic detection and uh, we get a relative, again a relatively good f uh, 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 fit uh, between the two mappings at diffuse skylight but while there is a rather huge de deviation if we have full sunlight at the surface. So that's uh, also experience. We got this uh, imagery from uh, colleagues from the University of Stuttgart and uh, they did the first flight they did at uh, full sunlight at the surface with their UAV and they looked then at the results and they actually also decided uh, independent from this results to f make further flights rather under, uh, uh, under cloudy conditions because you have uh, homogeneous elimination then. So this uh, method can be used, it's uh, like already fast enough to really process uh, the full resolution image at, uh, so this is uh, uh, a, lot of, a lot of data it's at, uh, for the full lens light with resolution between 5 and 10 centimeters but we are fast enough to, to uh, process uh, the full scene at reasonable time and uh, make then an interpretation really at, uh, at, the, sc at the slope scale uh, we can also visualize that uh, nicely in 3D uh, with the topographic model of the subsurface that we have to relate uh, the occurrence of that fractures to the underlying topography and we get an idea how the mechanics of that landslide work 
works and what, uh, 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 what causes that fractures and also how they evolve in time. Something we look now at the moment is uh, uh, the, there is uh, still uh, a parameterization step is uh, one important step is the, to scale this fe feature, uh, uh, these filters to the, to the size of the feature you are looking at. I know it's just one minute. Uh, uh, and what you can do is you can also apply these filters in a row at different scales and you uh, retain the maximum response from the scale where you get the maximum response. So you m this is known from scale space theory as an automatic scale selection. So that would reduce, it takes more processing time, but it reduces the need for uh, 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 manual uh, parameterization. Another uh, final, I cannot switch anymore? No, not at all? Please, yes. Uh, one final thing uh, we look at, we also took, f because we now have only one reference inventory, and, uh, well, this is also, there's some subjective judgment involved from the expert, so we got 14 individuals to map the fissures. We, they sit down and two hours and map them, and we uh, compare uh, their agreement with our detector now, and we want to use that data set, which is then quite a robust estimator of how good we are, uh, we want to use that for some benchmarking to see how other uh, uh, crack detection methods uh, perform at the moment. Maybe in the future that could be useful for other uh, uh, features also where you find fractures, maybe gullies, I don't know. Uh, well, thank you for your attention.